just super nice. Like this is a really perfect example of how this hardware and software integration should be. Hey, and welcome back to the Emlyn in the mix show. Super exciting episode because we are looking at the brand new hardware, the Native Instruments Complete Control Mark III. This is the S49 version in front of me here. I'll just um, move the camera so you can see it there. Got that brand new huge screen in the middle, beautiful anodized parameter control, touch sensitivity, and that encoder there as well. We're gonna be looking at this thing today and yeah, I'm gonna give you my thoughts and feelings and my feedback on it. This is the first video of many that I'll do with the complete control. So if I've missed anything in today's show, don't worry, we'll cover it in a future episode. You can leave a comment down below. Uh, Emlyn, you didn't cover that section. Um, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely look at every aspect of this beautiful MIDI controller as time goes on. But anyway, thank you. What is this show about? It is, of course, the Emlyn in the Mix show slash podcast. And thank you very much to Native Instruments for letting us check out this piece of hardware today. Full disclosure, we'll have an affiliate link down below. If you just feel the need or the urge to get one of these MIDI controllers, they're available right now. They only came out two, I think, slash three days ago. You can pick yourself up a complete control Mark III. They come in a 61 key or an 88 key. Link down below. It is an affiliate link. So there's a little bit of a kickback for me, but it's cool because you're supporting the channel and you're getting possibly a great product for you. Now, I'm a little bit simping over this and I'll give you give you some of my reasons and then we'll delve into why I think this is a fantastic MIDI controller. But the first reason, and I just want to clear the water on this, is that I actually upgraded from the Mark 1. So this was quite a leap for me. So I wasn't a Mark 2 user. So for those of you who were a complete control Mark 2 uh, user, I can't speak for you. I, I didn't have one. I know that they had the screens on them. The Mark 1 literally had no screens. Just keep that in mind. It had the tiny little uh, LED screen, but it didn't have the two huge, gorgeous screens that you had on the Mark 2. Now you got the singular screen, fantastic. I really like the workflow of this, and this is the first iteration of the software. There are a few little bugs I'll talk about as well, which I'm sure that they can iron out in some software updates and just my thoughts and feedback on it. That's all this show is going to be about necessarily. So quickly, let's just go have a look at the overview and then we'll have a little play around with it. And that's the show today. So hope you enjoy. So complete control S series by Native Instruments has dropped and they're touting it as a smart keyboard controller to bring virtual instruments to life. And I could agree with that. With my play with it and the time I've had with it, it definitely brings your software instruments to life. I really hope more companies can jump on board with the NKS, the code that requires the integration between the two. I really hope that happens. Overall, beautiful looking keyboard. It's a unibody, so it doesn't have any creases on it. It's one piece of, I think it's aluminum or plastic, the top, it's plastic, sorry. One piece, there's no creases, really lovely layout with the light guide as well for each key. You've also got, I'll pop you over onto the real thing here. If we look at the real thing. So you've got this LED ring around the encoder here where I can actually select. Let's see, the screen's so huge, you can actually see, which is great. I can select my sounds. And actually I'll just pull it up on, let's pull it up on Ableton Live here so you can actually see what's going on. So yeah, there's the software there. Now they've actually updated, thanks sound that went on for ages with a million percent decay. Um, they've actually updated the complete control software, which is really cool as well. And as I said before, I'm sure that they will be able to do further improvements and updates to the software. But yeah, you can go through with the encoder control. And then after you select your instruments uh, and you press plug in here, you then have full control over the macro controls with these encoders here. Okay, and then over here is what I was trying to show you on the screen before. We got this awesome as LED strip here, uh, which you can, you know, uh, use to, I guess, anything. You could have it on your pitch or expression. I don't know why you do that because you got your mod wheels here. Mod wheels feel amazing. They have a little LED so you can sort of see where they are, which is really good. I suppose if you're performing live 
and or in the dark and you need to see where the uh, parameter on the expression mod wheel was that's a nifty little feature and then your pitch bend the pitch bend always goes back to zero so LED is not really necessary it just looks really cool the key bed too amazing I love this key bed it just feels so good it is I believe it's for tar um, I mean we're gonna get into it up there on the screen let's just jump back to the native instruments website but yeah really super cool hardware hopefully i'm showing it off in all of its glory today so controllers and advanced midi keyboard controller now i know for those of you who are listening as well make sure to head over to youtube because this is going to be a bit of a visual show today head over to youtube or spotify you can watch it on spotify as well and watch the video if you can all right, controllers and advanced MIDI keyboard control available in three size options. Stay in the flow with an innovative, intuitive collection of instruments, effects, and your door, plus immersive navigation on a high res screen. Choose from 49 to 61 semi weighted keys or 88 fully weighted hammer action keys, all with polyphonic aftertouch as standard. And a direct connection with Contact. I believe they're doing an update with Contact. So you, it's going to, I cannot wait for this to drop. I don't believe the software is out yet. It may have dropped and I've missed it or haven't downloaded it yet. But that's why I'm saying we're going to do further videos on this because I will definitely show this off in all its glory when everything is fully up and running. You're going to have direct connection with Contact, which is super exciting. So <clears throat> Control brings virtual instruments to life in a genuinely immersive experience. Whatever you're playing, get in depth control with deep contact integration and next generation NKIS technology. Find sounds quickly with intuitive on-screen navigation, then adjust and play them thanks to intelligent auto mapping that understands the parameters. The unparalleled direct connection means no interruptions to your workflow with just with not just NI instruments, but thousands of partner sounds. That's very true. You'll see I've got a plethora of instruments on here. Very nice. I do like the workflow on this, I'm not going to lie. There's an 88 key hammer action. That looks amazing. Absolutely beautiful. And you can see the iterations there. Again, link down below if you just want to get yourself one and you think this is for you. Amazing, amazing piece of hardware. Link down below. It is an affiliate link, of course, but if you love what you see on the show today or hear on the show today and you're excited to get one, definitely do yourself a favor. favor. Early Christmas present, perhaps. Also, it has polyphonic aftertouch. Yay. Finally, we have polyphonic aftertouch. So take expression one step further with the slightest pressure on individual keys. Bring new layers of, of nuances to your playing with cutoff pitch, vibrato, and much more without reaching for an extra encoder or dial. And all three models come complete with polyphonic aftertouch on an industry-leading keybed developed in collaboration with Fatar. Plus, the S88 is the world's first widely available controller keyboard to combine polyphonic aftertouch with weighted hammer action keys. I don't know if that's a new thing, the weighted hammer action keys with aftertouch, because I believe the Korg Nautilus has that as well, which is super interesting. I don't know how that must feel. I guess it's just, yeah, you got a hammer action and you got aftertouch. Very interesting indeed and you can see here there's plenty of videos over on native instruments you can check out it does have door integra integration so you can hook up your door such as logic pro ableton live pro tools you name it actually i don't know about pro tools but i've got it hooked up with my door here today which i'm going to show you which is absolutely fantastic so smooth integration with all major doors means you can keep your eyes on your keyboard away from your computer screen hit record stop and rewind on the keys mix and edit and see all your projects channels on the display which i'll show you today highly visual you got the light bed plug and play it is si simple to plug in and play and it's built to last a very beautiful build all three models are built with the same premium materials with a large glass screen touch sensitive anodized aluminium encoders and mob wheels and redesigned tactile buttons gotta say i love the huge encoder wheel absolutely love it and with the amazing collection of sounds that is now available with native instruments i mean this could just be your end all and be all honestly i love where they're going with this and i love that they've done this update um, it's really fantastic to see. So let's, uh, let's get stuck into it. Let's jump over to Ableton Live and 
Let me just show you how this thing works. We'll try and bring you, hopefully my other camera hasn't gone all weird on you there. All right, there we go. So let's go through some of the sounds here and we'll pull up an instrument. So I'm gonna go through my instruments here and let's just see, let's, uh, let's go for something like, all right, so something I know I have, which is Analog Dreams. All right, here we go. We're gonna load this preset here. Oh, I thought it was pushed down. There we go, it is pushed down. So now I've got my instrument here and you'll see on the screen, actually, I'm pull up my camera so you can see. This is really cool. So I've got full control. Actually, I just have to put my pedal on. Cut off filter. I can't really play keys and hold the camera at the same time, so you'll have to excuse that. You hear both layers. I'm controlling the cutoff there. I could control the attack, so it's got a slow attack. Blend the A, a and B. Just super nice. Like this is a really perfect example of how this hardware and software integration should be. Absolutely amazing. I will show you as well, I do have door control as well. So here, so when I play, you can see that's the complete control. And I can turn it up or down. So I could turn it right down, back to zero. And then just to go back, sorry, you can see my wire there for my camera, but to go back, we just go to plugin and then we're greeted back with the interface here. And if I wanna change the sound, I can hit browser and then I'm back in my browser mode here. And actually we should probably, let's go for another instrument. All right, so we'll go back to my instruments and let's see what else should we do. Let's see, it has to be VST3. All right, so let's go through the ARP 2600V. Let's, hopefully this one's VST3. Let's try to sequence here. Yes, okay, good. We got one that's working. Now if the, some, they don't all have graphics um, on the actual interface, but that's fine. You can still get the macro controls and the parameters there and you can see my software up in the screen there. So this is a little sequence here using Arturia's ARP 2600V. I'm sure in maybe a later update, that will include like the graphics uh, for the screen, or maybe it's not really necessary. I mean, you can still see it's the ARP 2600 version three or V3. So I've got cutoff control. So you can have some real fun, really easy, tight, easy control. And if I wanna go a little bit further on sort of the parameters here. It's much like machine. If you're a machine user, you'll know you've got these little arrows here. And we've got more parameter control here. FMs, for example, let's see. Not sure what that actually controls. Oh yeah, you can hear that doing something. So you can get further in the back end, more or less. Increase the sustain. So you get the idea, you can really mess around with the sound. And it's a lot of fun there. You've put heaps of decay on that sound there now. All right, let me, uh, let's go for another sound here. So I go back to my browser and, oh, you can't see that I'm on my browser right now actually, but I am in my browser, I'm in instruments. So I'm gonna go through and let's see, what else could we get? Oh, we could try the Balkan. This is all like World Series. All right, let's try that. Let's load it. Let's see how this looks. I have no idea how this is going to actually look. Oh, wow, there we go. Let's bring you back to the keyboard. All right, so here we can see we've got the Balkan Ethnic. All 
Mm. We've got some controls like reverb I could turn off. So this is like your World Series sort of instrument. Actually, it sounded so much better with reverb, didn't it? Let's put that back on. Lovely. I can also change the sounds here in the top right, so we just click that. Actually, sorry, no, that takes me through. Okay, so if I want to add effects, we can do that here as well. So we could add effects in addition to what we've already got. Let's see if we can do that live here on the show. So here you'd hit that, you'd go to browser. Now we're in the effects section here. And now we just got to look for, let's see, what could we put on here, which would actually be kind of interesting and nice. Okay. All right, we'll try this delay bridge. I mean, it's a simple sort of delay. Now we're gonna have a, a crazy delay on here. Super, super nice indeed. And if we have the software nice and big there on the screen, you can see, you can just keep adding. So you got these little pluses here. I really like the new complete control, the concept here behind it by adding your instrument here. And then you can continually add effects as you go along. It is really, really nice to see. All right, I'm gonna just actually, so I'll go back uh, by clicking that top button there. There is a way you can go through your presets. Again, I'm gonna to have to do, I'm gonna to have to do more videos on the complete control, this brand new iteration, because there is gonna be software updates. But I freaking, I have to say, I love it. And again, it is coming from. You gotta realize, and I want to make this very clear. I'm coming from someone that went from the Mark One to this. It's quite a jump. And also being a machine user, if you're a machine user, you love that workflow then the Complete Control Mark III is really gonna appeal to you. I love what they're doing. I love the idea behind you know, getting in there and just really being able to mess around with the parameters, the sounds, using the macro controls. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. All right, I'm just gonna get another instrument here and let's see, let's just... Now there are all the different um, brands as well, which I can actually just go via brand. So we could, for example, we could just do a Turia, look at what we've got here. So I've got, actually, we looked at this synthesizer not long ago on the channel, the Acid V. Let's load that. That's gonna come up here. And I got full control. Let's change my camera. That, that freaking thing, I'll get lost. I'll get absolutely lost in the Aturia. Honestly, super fun. All right, let me get another instrument. We're in Aturia here. I love that I love that Aturia and Native Instruments have teamed up. It's really cool. Uh, let's look at, I wanna look at this one. So this is the CMIV. I'm gonna load that preset there. Bit of fun. So you can see it on my screen there. So 80s. That's cool, I can get the bass drum in or out. That's sick. Filter it out. There's no way that the CMI, is this the fair light? That's so sick. Anyway, it's all been done from the complete control here. Hopefully you can see what I'm, uh, it's the same stuff I showed you before, but yeah, you got your parameter control, your macro controls. It's really hard to hold the camera and play at the same time. But yeah, all I'm doing is playing with these macro controls. 
turning on certain features on and off on the software. And I'm getting that nice, really interesting little rhythm going there as well. All right, bring us back to our full screen. I don't know. Let's search another one here. Um, this is I could do this all day. This is super fun. All right, so we go through our trio. Oh, the DX7. All right, let's see. Let's load that one there. All loads really nicely. Here we go. Bit of a sequence for us. If that will sustain pedal holds it down. All right, it's an arpeggio. Turn it up or down here. Turn the different FM engines up or down. Super, super cool indeed. Now, going back to the hardware, actually, we'll bring this camera back here, and I'll just show you some of the other functionalities with the complete control. So you have the settings here, which we can click on, and we can actually change the uh, color of the light guide. You got blue, we got a, oh, that was a teal, we got a dark blue. Sorry about that wire there. Torquoise, actually, that's blue. There we go, that's a real blue. True blue, mate. Plum, they're calling it. All right, I'll just read what it says here. Violet, and you can see it changes up really nicely. Magenta, fuchsia, that's a pretty cool color. So yeah, you can change it to your liking, to your studio liking. I personally like this mint. There's cyan, actually cyan's pretty nice, but I like this mint. It's sort of like a, a iridescent, bluey green really like it. actually suits the dx7 that i've got on the screen there um so you do have that you've also got play assist um where if you this is going to be tricky while i'm holding the camera but if i hold down shift and scale for example i'm now in scale now because this preset already has an arpeggiator actually this is not a good example so what i'll do is i'll get a different sound so let me just go back to our synth here and let me get a different sound for you. So if we go back to browser, let's uh, find here, this one, this will do, or just not a sequence. Mm, it's a bit long. Maybe that, we'll try that. It's not a great sound, but. All right, we'll go back. All right, cool. So now we'll go back to my other camera. All right, cool. So this sound will do. So we press play assist here and we want to go shift into our scale mode. So now we're already actually in. If you see the light, I don't know if you can see the light guide there, but it's already lighting up the scale that I've got it selected at and we can change the scale as well in here, which uh, scale we want, sequence and so forth. And if we jump over to our ARP and we turn ARP on, gosh, this is hard to do with the camera and the thing. All right, cool. And now we've got ARP should be on. So yeah, there you go. And you can change the rates and the style. We can have it go up and down. Or we can have it just go down, so it's like... And we forgot to even talk about the aftertouch on this key bed, which also feels amazing. But look at this, like when I push down harder... That's a really good sound example to show off the aftertouch, actually.
Anyway, you get the idea. So you do have the full play assist functionality. I'll play a bit more for you because I love the sound. And because it's already in the key that you want, it's all gonna work. We can put swing on it as well. Give it a totally different groove. We can change the sequence. Speed it up. Anyway guys, I think for now, that is what is gonna show you off the complete control. And there is a lot more to it than what I've just shown today. But I think the overall theme is being able to get in there, really control all of your instruments that you have and it's really, really freaking cool. Being able to add the effects chain as well, I really like what they're, the direction they've gone with complete control is super, super nice indeed. Play assist is really good. Everything's easy and accessible to get to. I mean, you've got the full door control. I even f really, really realized, kind of in speak, that, you know, I don't even know if I showed, you got the transport section here as well. So I haven't got anything on this particular track, but look there, that's actually playing in Ableton Live. I don't know if you can see that in the screen there, the little play button's going when I do that, and we can stop it and we can even record here as well. But all in all, what do I think? First impressions of this is that it is beautifully made. It looks absolutely amazing. And again, the direction of this thing is incredible. Everything feels super quality. And again, this was a big jump for me. So again, I'm gonna simp a little bit over this. But if you were a Mark II user, I cannot speak on your behalf. Is this worth the upgrade? I actually do not know. But for those of you who are Mark I, or Native Instruments users, or if you're one of the complete users where you've got all of the Native Instruments instruments, I think this might be a no-brainer, and you should definitely do yourself a favor, get yourself an early Christmas present. Click that link down below. It is an affiliate link. If you love what you saw here today and you want to get yourself this amazing hardware, it is the Complete Control Mark III. I hope I've shown it off in as much of the glory as I possibly could. Door control, plug-in control, browser of all your instruments. I know we only looked at a few instruments today, but there is a plethora of companies on here that you can actually, you know, what have we got? Let's have a look. If I go through, I've got Korg, I've got uh, Native Instruments, of course, Impact Soundworks, Heaviosity, Plug-in Alliance, Softube, Waldorf, Uheats on here as well, Sugar Bites. I mean, the list really does go on and... It's just really great. I can get in there and, and, you know, here we've got the walled off stretch fit, which I can never say, the string synthesizer. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video today. And again, this is just the first of many videos. Oh, Emlyn, you didn't show this thing off. Oh. Uh, look forward to your comments. Thanks so much for joining me on episode 37 of the Emlyn in the Mix show. We'll be back next week with another goodie. And till then, have a great week in the studio, producing, doing what you got to do. And we'll see you next week. Peace out. Boom. Hey, thanks for listening to the Emlyn in the Mix podcast. Here, you will find all the latest in music technology, software and hardware, interviews and more. Also, don't forget to check out the Emlyn in the Mix YouTube channel today. Till next time, keep it real.